Just a few hours ago, Blizzard announced the upcoming 10.2.7 patch, including the details of the time-running Pandaria feature they teased all the way back in January. Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm going to talk about patch 10.2.7, but first, don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's just get right into it. So far, patch 10.2.7 isn't offering huge changes for retail WoW, but there are a couple of new quest lines. One is a wrap-up to the Dragonflight campaign named Sins of the Sister, and the other quest lines are Heritage Armor quest lines for Trolls and Draenei. Very cool, we are not able to test those quest lines, but we are able to look at the Heritage of the Draenei and Heritage of the Dark Spear. And let's just take a look at those armor sets now. As you can see, <laughs> the male troll mask is very weird. It looks like a proboscis, a schnoz, an elephant's uh, trunk. It's very strange. But I think the rest of this set looks really good, so hopefully they'll get that mask a little bit shorter, more in line with the size of their face. It looks pretty normal for female trolls. It might be clipping into their body, I can't tell. In any case, if they shorten that mask up, I think it'll look pretty good. And I do really like the back, uh, the sh sort of shield on the back. I think that looks really cool. And I think the, the colors are really good and the, the fact that they give you two colors and sort of a matching two-handed sword, I think it's pretty nice as well. Very nice looking sword, really matches that armor set. The Heritage of the Draenei is also available in two sets and it has two different masks. And I think it looks okay. To be honest, I think the, the artwork is good. Like the, the artists always do a great job. For me, it does look like Oshugan and a lot of those uh, crystal-y areas from the Burning Crusade definitely is very thematically consistent with Draenei. Maybe it's the helmets, right? Maybe the helmets just look goofy, but the helmets with the horns sticking through look uh, pretty silly to me. I'm not a huge fan of that. I think if, if I get in and play around with this and take the helmet off, I think I might be a much bigger fan because I do think the shoulders look pretty nice. I think the color palettes are pretty good. The other more important change is to the group finder tool. The search function for finding Mythic Plus groups is really antiquated and Blizzard's giving it a massive overhaul. As you can see in patch 10.2.7, they're finally modernizing the built-in search function so that you won't need add-ons to find Mythic Plus groups. This makes perfect sense to me. They are revamping the dungeon difficulty system in Season 4, so they might as well update the tool for searching for groups too. And as you can see, there is a lot of functionality here now. You can filter by language, you can filter by Mythic Plus rating, you can filter specifically by dungeon, whether a group needs a tank or a healer, or has somebody of the same class as you in the group, or has a tank, or has a healer. Very, very detailed, very robust, very well made. Looks really good. All right, now let's move on to the big moneymaker, Time Running Pandaria. I guess they're calling it WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria as well. It's the event so nice they named it twice. Like Plunderstorm, this is a limited time event that takes place in the WoW client, but in a separate instance version of the game. But unlike Plunderstorm, it is not a PvP only game mode, and it just involves playing a retail WoW character, using skills, and behaving in the normal World of Warcraft style. You use class skills to kill dudes, you loot their stuff, level up to 70, that's all normal. They've also learned from the reaction of Plunderstorm and started using this time now to build up hype for the upcoming event by giving players a lot of details about the event to build excitement and a chance to test the event early, which is coming this weekend. So what is WoW Remix Miss of Pandaria? Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, what is WoW Remix Miss of Pandaria? I didn't plan that, that's just perfect. It is a limited time event that allows players to re-experience the entirety of the Mists of Pandaria expansion at an accelerated rate from level 10 to level 70. All the loot has been completely overhauled and has powerful new effects, allowing players to shape their experience, power up and power on. And basically, it allows you to level up faster. You are able to play presumably any class in any race. You could, like, make a Night Elf Demon Hunter and play through Pandaria. You could make a Drakthir Evoker and play through Pandaria. You get loot from everywhere, quests, chests, bosses, and so on. You're able to do all of the dungeons and scenarios and raids while leveling up. It's very inspired by Season of Discovery. And there is like a sort of a really strong bad luck protection system where anytime you get any gear that's not particularly good you're able to convert it into currency that you can use to upgrade items or buy cosmetic stuff and that is kind of the big hook here is there's tons of cosmetic stuff either just old stuff that's being brought back so that you can get it again 
or recolors of old stuff that were never available in the first place. We're going to kind of take a look at that now. And best of all, all of this stuff carries over with you into retail. Wow, including the character that you level. So let's just take a look at this accelerated leveling and content table that made a pretty nice little table here to look at. The level range for like Jade Forest is 10 to 70, Crassering Wilds, Valley of the Four Winds and the 5.1 campaign is 20 to 70, Kunlai Summit starts at 25. All of this stuff scales up to 70. They're using all of that time walking and level scaling tech that is really, really robust and like repurposing it so that you can level through any parts of Pandaria and never be outside of the level range for that zone. You're able to do scenarios, you're able to do dungeons starting from level 10 and going all the way up to level 70. You're even able to do level 25 to like 70 raids by doing normal Mogashan Vaults, normal Heart of Fear, normal Terrace of the Endless Spring. Lots of cool stuff here, and for a lot of people who did miss Mists of Pandaria the first time around and, you know, maybe don't want to go level there in Retail WoW because it's not as efficient as uh, doing Warlords of Drain or leveling, I think this is a great chance to go either experience it for the first time because you missed it, or just re-experience it because, you know, it's fun and you kind of miss it, and it's not really the same to go play there uh, all on your own in Retail WoW. Getting to go there and do this all in an accelerated fashion with tons of other people, that seems very exciting. A big part of the hook here is that this isn't just mop classic. You're not just limited to like playing a patch 5.0 Pandaren monk, right? You're able to play any of the classes, any of the races that are available in modern WoW, including like a demon hunter. You can go play a demon hunter in Pandaria, do all of the Pandaria content as a demon hunter or an evoker or any of the new races that have been added since then. And you get transmogs and you're able to take those out of this event and into retail wow which i think is really cool you're able to get like achievements in this event that then carry over as feats of strength into retail wow that's also pretty interesting and i think best of all and something that they maybe have kind of left a little unsaid here is that this is basically it seems like their version of giving you that super duper fast leveling toward the end of an expansion instead of just going like okay we'll make some sort of special new heirloom potion type of deal you're able to do this fun interesting event with a lot of exploration and seeing how how they've kind of reworked pandaria and at the end of it now you have a level 70 character that you're then able to play the war within using I think that's really cool. I think that is so much better than that traditional 50% increased XP bonus for leveling up alts. And that's not to say they won't also do that as well. But it is a new Miss of Pandaria to explore and play around in. It's taking a lot of fun and excitement that the Season of Discovery player base has been really enjoying and bringing it over to retail. Wow, I've been wanting something like this for a while and it's it's kind of everything I hoped for and more. There's also some really cool powers in here as well. I'm just going to kind of show off a couple of these. Thundering Orb. It's a meta gem socket that you, or meta gem that you're able to put into a meta gem socket and it allows you to transform into an orb doing a ton of damage over four seconds. You take less damage, you move faster, you're immune to CC. It's kind of like a blade storm, but made out of lightning. That's pretty interesting. Uh, we have another one here, Fervor, that I was really excited about. This goes in a tanker slot, and it makes it so that while you're above 80% health, your attacks consume 2% of your max health to inflict holy damage based on the amount of damage or amount of health that you consume. This is really cool for tanks. I would love to see something like this in retail WoW, the ability to scale your health up and, and also your self-healing. You know, you have to be above 80% health for this to function. So that gives you this real incentive to have max, like a massive amount of health and a lot of healing and that directly converts into damage. Blood DKs are going to be absolutely loving this. Very interesting that they went with sort of a Holy Paladin themed concept here, but it just screams Blood DK to me. And then finally, I've kind of saved the best for last here when it comes to skills. Uh, there are cogwheel gems that allow you to just like, OK, I'm a warlock and I can have blink now. I'm a, I don't know, a blood DK and I can have roll. You can pick up sprint as any class. I think that is super, super awesome. Imagine being a, <laughs> a paladin with sprint. That sounds pretty sick. 
Also throughout the event, you'll have an artifact cloak. This cloak, the Cloak of Infinite Potential, will give you permanent power while you are playing, and it is shared with your alts. So as you level up your main character in the event, you increase the power of the cloak. As you can see, it has like primary stats, and stamina, and secondary stats, and tertiary stats, and increased XP generation. And as you power that up on your main when you log over to your alts. Now they'll have that cloak ready to go from level 10, getting tons of extra stats and extra XP and leveling up even faster in this already accelerated mode. So I think the possibility of, you know, if you want to level a whole roster of characters from 10 to 70, <laughs> I don't know how fast it'll be, but presumably a much faster span of time than you can do on retail wow that seems like it's going to be not only an option an intended gameplay loop and then finally i just kind of wanted to close on some really cool looking uh, recolors of old transmogs as you can see here this is a beautiful red white and black recolor of the original jikun mount and if we take a look at that mount clutch of jikun kind of kind of dumpy blah what is that brown black red like it's a cool looking model but the the colors don't really pop but that those colors right there oh baby they pop and then just to look at my character right here i'm on the astral cloud serpent one of my personal faves it's it's blue and and it looks like stars that's pretty cool and it seems like they're saying this gold astral cloud serpent that they put into the game ages ago or that was data mined ages ago and was never actually available for players to have it looks like they're saying you're going to be able to get this thing. So I'm very excited about that. Whatever it takes to get that, I'm going to be doing it because I really, really want that thing. Looks awesome. All right. So I think that pretty much covers everything about WoW Remix. I think, you know, the best of all of this is not only is all of this stuff cool and interesting and exciting, but it's going to be available for testing in less than two days. Testing will start on Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, and it'll run until uh, Sunday, I think, at 10 Pacific time as well. And that's pretty interesting. They have made a post about that saying exactly that stuff. Oh, it'll be 10 Pacific uh, p.m., but 10 a.m. Pacific on Friday, 10 Pacific p.m. on Sunday. So you'll get the whole weekend basically to test it out. And as I've said here, during that time, all of Pandaria Remix will be available to test, which is crazy. Not what I expected. Level 10 to 70, all the zones, all the scenarios, all the dungeons, and they've even added Mythic Siege of Orgrimmar, which is pretty interesting. All of it will be available. As they've said here, there's much more that could be completed in one weekend, but during this testing period, we'd love to hear how you feel about tuning rewards and if you run into any bugs. I think that's all super, super exciting. I cannot wait to test it. I won't have to wait even two full days, so that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, things are looking pretty exciting in World of Warcraft. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.